The Spring State Tournament has sprung as nine, count them, nine Henrico teams make it at least to the semifinals. Welcome to Sportswire. I'm Will Catterley. We start with softball, where the top seed from Region B, Glenn Allen, played host to Gloucester. This was high drama as an old-fashioned pitching duel turned into an extra inning affair, and one young Jag looked to play the hero. Glenn Allen playing host to Gloucester, and boy was this a pitcher's duel. The Dukes of Gloucester from the 757 taking on Emerson Anderson, strike him out, sit him down, first inning, Anderson. Couple of Ks in the inning, then later she was straight out dealing. Double digit strikeouts on the evening for Emerson and Aiken would go the distance in this one. What more Emerson Aiken? You got it. Strike him out, sit him down. Neither team would have a hit through four innings because the Dukes, they had a pitcher as well who was firing and finding the back of the catcher's mitt and striking out players left and right. Mackenzie Smith with the put out right there. Back to Emerson Aiken. Like I said, neither team with the hit after four innings and only one base runner. That was Gloucester on a walk. However, the Dukes with a chance right here. Runner on first, and the bunt just trying to move the play. Player over to second. She overruns third. Paramount play to be made there. They get the out at third, and Glenn Allen escapes danger. Now, let's go bottom seven. Still no score. Bases loaded, chance for a walk-off. Can of corn, Dukes get out of trouble. No harm, no foul. So, extra innings, let's go to the ninth. A base hit, and a big one at that by Carmen. All bets are off. Bets later, sacrifice to second. The lead of this, it's a base hit. Taylor Cochran, and Cochran is the girl of the hour. The walk-off single. And Glenn Allen in extra innings. Vanquish Gloucester as their season continues. And the freshman gets it done. one nothing. your final. Well, honestly, I just listened to my coach, Glenn. She told me the right fixes to make. And I made that fix. And I was thinking right center. And I can fix him. She's a freshman! <laughs> What a memory for that young lady. Well, deep run, Godwin playing in the regional semifinals. Winner advances the states, loser goes home. Godwin answering the call with the bats early and off and couple runners on would lead to this. Hit by a pitch is Bryce Safferwich. Now you got a gaggle of Eagles on base. Bases are loaded. And what good teams do is take advantage. It's a base hit up the middle. One run scores. They're going to send another. He is. Out at the plate, boy. Deep runs been making a living, getting out at home plate. They did it twice against Lee Davis to advance to the regional semis. But that toggle hunt, Big Bo Richmond coming through. One run scores, two run score. Here comes another. The ball gets kind of played around in the outfield, and an error and a single and a couple RBIs. Three runs come across. Goblin up four zip. Deep run. Trying to come back. That ball eats up the second baseman. It's a base hit. Hayes falling on second. And Alex Bertrand delivering with the single. On the mound, however, boy, has he been good in the postseason. Sam Landis gets a strikeout looking there. And then Landis. High cheese. Fastball. Strike him out. Sit him down. Godwin gets out of trouble. And that would be big because the bats would come back up. To attack once again. Tyler brought rough first inning. Starting to settle down a little bit, though. Gets a couple strikeouts there. Brought doing the work, trying to get Deep Run back into it. And guess what? Deep Run would. Number 23. That will work. It's a base hit. They got a runner going all the way to third. Eli Wiesner delivers a double Deep Run with runners at second and third. Landis trying to get out of trouble. Ground ball. It'll be an RBI ground up for Carson Jones. Deep run back on the board. Now it's just four to one. Could they add one more in the inning and cut this lead in half? The answer's yes. That'll work. It drops in for an RBI single. Run comes across the score in the form of Eli Wiesner. Wildcats right back in this. It's a ball game against Tyler Brott helping himself on the mound. It's four to two, but the Eagles were not finished. Runner on third, ball gets away, and the runner is safe at home. Mark Busson scores and puts Goblin up 5-2. Still not done. 
rice, sapper witch, and a bag of chips. Pitbull will see ya next time. Sapper witch and Godwin connect for a two-run shot, and the Eagles would take a commanding 7-2 lead with that home run, and that would be your final as Mills Godwin moves on and punches their ticket to states. Question is, who would they play? How about the purple and gold of Menchville from the 757? Godwin, the number one seed from regional play, so they get the home game. And early on, they call a balk on the pitcher right there. I think he started and stopped his delivery. What does that do? Well, that puts Godwin in motion. It gets Rand Beals to second, and then that base hit's going to work for an RBI. Godwin on the board up 1-0 on the RBI single by Noah Berenger. 1-0 after 3. I said Sam Land has been a beast in the postseason. He was. 11 strikeouts on the evening, including this one right here. What more Landis? You got him. Pounding the strike zone, getting the lower third. Gets a strikeout look, and they can't even get the bat off their shoulders for that one. Meanwhile, Godwin, patience, patience, patience. It's a virtue, right? One walk. That curveball a little high, two walks. Let's put it this way. Now the bases are loaded. There's a walk to force in a run. The Godwin Eagles forcing Menchville pitching to throw strikes. So what do they do? They go to the bullpen. That one's a ball and gets away. Wild pitch. Runner comes across to score. Noah Berenger. Here comes another. He scores as well. Godwin Eagles without more than just one hit in this inning, putting up a crooked number. Still batting. That's called ball four. Eagles score another one. And Godwin. Not playing perfect baseball, but playing smart baseball. Five runs on three hits through five innings is more than enough for Sam Landis, who had himself a ball game. Again, 11 strikeouts on the evening. Menchville was no match for Landis. Godwin's going to end Menchville's season. Godwin baseball is going to advance to the state semifinals. They win it. Five zip. So Godwin advances on the baseball diamond, where they'll meet up with Halifax in the semifinals. We turn to tennis when we come back. Deep Run looks to take care of Princess Anne on the court. Plus, we need extra time in girls' soccer in regionals as Freeman and Glen Allen hook up. That and more straight ahead. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Sports Wire. It's Tennis Anyone Deep Run. Defending state champs in the state quarterfinals at home, taking on Princess Anne from the 757. And Olivia Wright could do no wrong. As usual, taking on Isha Mohan. Right on the serve. And Olivia, way too much for Mohan. 6 1, 6 0. A swing and a miss, strike three. Olivia gets the victory. More from right. Just cause, right? Can't handle the serve. It's like, yeah, that's good. Hot out here. Let's go to the number two. She wins, as I said, 6 1, 6 0. Audrey Butterworth who was doubles partners with Olivia Wright, and they went on to win the girls' doubles regional champ the championship. Audrey Butterworth taking on Chloe Wetzler. Wetzler delivering it down the line. Butterworth just knew what to do with just about everything. That is out. Later, more Butterworth down the line. Good. She gets the point. And she gets the win. Straight sets. Easy squeezy lemon peasy. 6 0 6 0. Brooke Kanatzer. I'm telling you, the one, two, three for deep run. Actually, one through six is going to be better than almost anybody in the state of Virginia. And that was the truth on the case and the truth on this particular afternoon as Brooke gets the point against another Chloe, Chloe Mankey. A little drop it like it's hot shot. 
and then slam it down. Hit it where she ain't. That's how you do it. 6-1-6-0. A victory for Brooke Knatzer. Jessica Wen and Bella Kavakan. Kavakan. And she gets a point there. Wen would come back and get a point herself. They would actually not finish their match because at number five and number six, Catherine Shen and Lindsay O'Neill will deliver for Deep Run, getting the necessary five points. The undefeated season continues. So does Deep Run season. They win five zip. How about guys? Tennis Deep Run taking on Princess Anne also. Yeah, so it was a loaded bus coming from the 7572 Deep Run. At least two matches going back to back. Siddharth Pandey is uh, looking pretty good in the far court, both wearing blue, against Stuart Tuck. Pandey been playing great tennis as the number one for Deep Run. And he's going to deliver and he's going to get the victory for the Wildcats. That's swing and a miss, strike three. Pandey now in the front court. Returning the serve and doing damage a number of ways. Let's go to the number twos. Mr. Andrew Angel in the front court. That ball is wide. He would have his hands full with Ethan Richardson. Princess Anne came into this match 12 and two on the year. Deep run 17 and one. So tremendous year. Between the guys and the girls team, one loss all season long. Wildcats, Angel gets the point there to the number threes. Spoiler alert, Deep Run took care of business against Princess Anne, both the guys and the girls. Uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner for Aiden Bashir against Owen Sikimachi, if I got that right. He gets the point right there anyway. Sure, I got that one wrong. Too much Aiden Bashir for Deep Run as he fulfills his role at number three. A Wildcat's going to take care of business. We go to the number fours. Hatcher Butterworth, brother of Audrey, getting it done. Gets a point right there. And it was all deep run in this one as they advance to the state semifinals. Both deep run, guys and girls won. Their opponent would be Mills Godwin. Wildcats get the victory. Let's head to regional semifinal soccer. It's Freeman, it's Glenn Allen. Both these teams have played each other twice in the regular season. Neither team has scored against each other. Both finished nil-nil. But this is the playoff. Somebody's got to get a goal, right? Well, it would take a while. Freeman looked like the better team with the majority of opportunities. What a job by the defender, though. Glenn Allen does a great job, not just in net, but their defenders get in there and knock it away. Lauren Bruns, always dangerous. Ooh, that could have been tapped in. Nice stop by the keeper. More Freeman. As I said, neither team has ever scored on each on one another in their matches this season. Both nil-nil draws. Big save there. Later, another chance. That's going to be kicked around. Finally, Glenn Allen corrals it. A 0-0 score this time. Freeman's second half. Big chance, and then another, and somehow it does not go in. Jaguars survive. A scare there, and then here's another one. Great job by the keeper, Glenn Allen. Both teams sat back in this play in about six defenders for quite a while before anything opened up. More second half. This shot saved in a beauty and bronze. Going for the ball, might have gotten a little bit of the cabeza right there. 0-0. Zero, zero. And we are going to overtime, in overtime. You get two five-minute overtimes, then you go to Golden Gold. Well, in overtime, Glenn Allen looked like they were going to have their chances to walk this one off to victory and advance to the regional finals and, more importantly, punch your ticket to states. Then Freeman, another chance. Shot in. Oh, my goodness. Big-time clearance, but almost an own goal. Speaking of which, we're going to Golden Gold. That means whoever scores, the game is absolutely over. So we've gone well over 80 minutes and change for a goal until Ashley Hemp puts the biscuit in the basket. Hemp delivers and Freeman gets the win in dramatic style. They move on to the regional finals. 
and end Glenn Allen's stellar season. 1-0 is your final. So the question was, who would Freeman face? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's, well, it's deep front. The ladies have been terrific. They've beaten Freeman twice in this season. Their only loss was to Glenn Allen. Early action, Freeman a chance. It's Ava Lohman, direct kick, no. They try to get it out of harm's way. Freeman another chance, oh! The defender does the splits to stop that one and then it gets skied over the bar. Wildcats dodge a big time bullet. Still first half highlights, still no score. The header just goes wide off the chance on the corner. Time for Freeman to have a corner. Number 13 delivers it. Somehow that one is stopped as Juliana McKean delivered that one in. No score at the half. So again, free kick, a chance. Gone awry, no good there. Skies it high. Does a deep runs. Natalie Nettemeyer. Later in the second half, though, some confusion. The ball gets away from the keeper. And Johnny on the spongy Juchi scores. Alex Horner. Scores it! Wildcats take it with a 1-0 lead. Just under 24 minutes to play in the second half. Freeman, desperate for an equalizer. Firing, it's Bruns, it goes wide. Wildcats looking for more damage. They have an opportunity. The shot! Horner again, maybe. Nedemeyer, no, it would save by Freeman, but that one goal would stand up and the Wildcats are your regional champs. They win it, 1-0. I was just telling myself to make it, and just not miss. Because all I had to do was tap it in, but I just need to make sure I went in. It's back to the pitch when we return as Deep Run takes her act to states. The Lady Wildcats try to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, not once, but twice. Highlights next. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back to Sports Wire. It's Deep Run hosting Nansman River State quarterfinals. A hero from the Freeman match. She shoots and goes wide. Alex Horner cannot connect. First half highlights Wildcats on the corner. Check this out. That's a long corner, but Wildcats going to make it seemed like it's gonna work out to fruition. Bouncing off the head a couple times, firing, hits one corner, and then almost the other before River, the River Warriors, get out of harm's way. Then check out this throw in later in the first half. Looks like Wildcats have clearance, but they do not. She shoots, and it is saved. Wildcats dodge a potential problem there. It'd be nil-nil, no score at the end of one half a play, second half though, River! What a header off of the corner, she shoots, she scores! Goal! And number four getting it done at Sarah Ryle, it's one nil, River! Wildcats running out of time, but they fire and find the back of the net! She shoots, she scores! Number 12 with the equalizer, Izzy Frazier comes up huge. Deep run, not done. It's tied at one. River on the free kick. Oh my, you gotta be kidding me. She shoots, she scores. Riley Goss puts Nansman River up two to one. Closing seconds of regulation now. A moment that will be remembered in deep run lore. Kaylee Schreiner! Goal! Snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. Wildcats have extra life. We're gonna go to overtime. Tied at two. And once again, just as the case was in Freeman, they went through the two five minute overtimes. Now we're in golden goal. And the lights shine bright on the stars at deep run. 
Natalie Nanemeyer, goal, game over. Wildcats in dramatic fashion. Come back not once, but twice and score the game winner when it matters most. Three to two is your final. And they even had time to cheer on the guys taking on Princess and could the deep run boys move on? Well, yes, the answer is yes. They're up 3-0. I pick up action here in the second half. Wildcats looking for more. A great shot in. Somehow saved. It's number 14 really had his opportunity. Luke Lowry seasoning salt. Wildcats not finished though. Boop. What a pass. Pretty, pretty. Oh, so pretty. He shoots. He scores. Asir Taha tallies that one. And Deep Run had a 4-0 lead. They are so talented. Uh, they are fast, and they are athletic, and they are big, too. Watch the breakout here. Josh Kirkland. Ooh, just goes wide. He's like, how the heck did I miss that? He doesn't miss them often. Finally, Princess Ann gets on the board. That corner, they connect, and they won't get shut out of this contest. Kudos to Princess Anne, but watch Lowry here on the throw-in. I love being downfield level. You actually get to see how big some of these athletes are. Coming into your picture, he shoots, he scores! Goal! Number 21 gets into the books. It's Kevin Sprints, and the sophomore says, come on, let's go to the crowd. There you are going. They're moving on to the semifinals, five to one. Back to tennis. It's a deep run world we're all just living in it when it comes to spring sports, when it comes to tennis and soccer. Godwin taking on deep run to the winner go the spoils. Rishi Shankar, regional five beach singles champion, taking on Siddharth Pandey. And Pandey was excellent in this one. So was Rishi, he always is. This is a terrific match. Pandey actually gets the best of Rishi Shankar. 6-4, 6-3, a huge win for deep run to the number twos. It's a battle of Drews. Andrew Angel in the front court for deep run Wildcats taking on Andrew Campbell in the far court for the Godwin Eagles. Back and forth they go, do -si do hitting the ball around. Um, one Drew was better than the other on this afternoon. And for Mills Godwin, they needed it to be their Drew. And they did get their Drew to play very well. Andrew Campbell, oh, he comes up short there. Angel gets the point, but overall, this was Campbell's match. He takes down Andrew Angel 6-0, 6-0 as you know, Godwin looks to even things up and find a way past deep run. Nice shot by Angel there, however, in defeat. To the number threes, Aiden Bashir versus Ben Grot. So Godwin got a big win at two, but the rest of the way, deep run is too deep and too talented for most squads, even Goblin. Nice shot, nice play by Ben Grot there to get the point. But Bashir was way too much as that shot just went wide. Aiden Bashir gets a win, 6-2, 6-1. Let's go to court number four. Hatcher Butterworth in the far court, taking on Sakti Ramasami. Ramasami can't get it past the net. Point for Butterworth. And let's just put it this way, at four, five, and six, deep run, got it done, including Hatcher, who wins 6-1, 6-3, and the deep run Wildcats move to the state finals. How would the girls fare? Emily Wirt in action against Olivia Wright. And just like Rishi Shankar for Mills Godwin, Emily Wirt is a Region 5B singles champ as well on the ladies' side. You can see why with shots like that. Work, taking care of business, gets the point. Olivier Wright, very good in her own right. See what I did there? In the far court. Wright. Back and forth they go. She gets the point, but she would not get the win. Neither would Emily Work. Why? Well, because this match would not finish. What a nice point. Sometimes it's good to be good and sometimes it's better to be lucky and good. To, well, yeah, Emily works both lucky and good on that particular shot. Let's skip over to court number three, shall we? Brooke Kanatzer in action in the front court. Taking on Andrea Jaffe in the far court. Jaffe, you gonna slam it home? No, Kanatzer connects. And oh, an unforced error. And Brooke gets the point and she would take down 
Andrew Jaffe, 6-1-6-0. So another win for the Wildcats as that shot goes long, and they win at number three to the number fours. Jessica Wynn. She's facing Cami Barshinger in the far court. Nice little rally right here. Barshinger. Cami. Trying to get that drop shot, then she's going to go down the line for the winner winner. Chicken dinner. Nice point by her, but it was too much. Jessica Wen. The shot looking good, making Wen work for it. But in the end, Jessica Wen been dominant at number four. She gets the win four deep run and then to the fives Catherine Shen of deep run on the front court getting the point against Allison Wang she would win that match 6-1 6-2 and we don't show enough of the fives in the sixes let's go to the number six it's Lindsay O'Neill in the far court for deep run taking on Diana Kirilov of Mills Godwin A nice rally here Kirilov with the return Lindsay O'Neill going to get aggressive. A little top spin action gets the point there. She's going to go uh, and win that first set 6 4. And she would win 6 4, 6 1 as she drops that shot perfectly. And the Wildcats will move on. Both boys and girls advance to the state championship match against TJ of Alexandria. So to recap, Deep Run Boys and Girls Soccer Advance, as does Deep Run Boys and Girls Tennis, Godwin Baseball, Softball, Boys Soccer, they all make it to the semifinals, and Glen Allen Softball and Freeman Girls Soccer move on as well. What an amazing ride we have to look forward to. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us, and you can always follow us on Twitter. I can't wait to see y'all next time on SportsWire.